Hey guys, this is Oli, and for the first time ever, I've managed to absolutely get a perfect score in an adventure. I'm so excited to show this to you guys. I've been spending quite a bit of time to perfect my strategies for all of these levels. I know it could be frustrating for some of you who don't happen to have all the units that I have, uh, but keep at it, even if you're not getting the final chest. And today you will actually see what we're getting in the final chest. Um, you can, of course, win some cool prizes and maybe unlock Akeshu. So, without further ado, let's delve right in. Let's look at the first level and see how this whole thing went down. So, as you can see here, I've been playing this level before. 498 out of 500 points. You need to get a lightning victory and then, of course, you also have to play with Kaven Realm Heroes, which means Night Vision Heroes. So, this seems to be the best strategy. The only thing that was kind of tricky was where do we attack on which side? So, Queen Akeshu goes on the right, um, Umanu also goes on the right, spreads darkness on the right, and now you need to move to the left with Ranaklu. That was the mistake I made the first time around, because the gunner on the right that I wanted to attack with Ranaklu was already down. And now it's basically infinite shades of yours against some opponents. Uh, we've, we've seen this before. Um, you want to move your units on one side, so you're not spreading them out too much, because if you're spreading them out too much, more often than not, you are uh, giving your opponent too much of an opening. So I'm moving to the left now, I'm basically moving to the side, and I'm not moving with Umanu to the right to attack the skeleton, because I want to keep everybody in a group on the lower left corner. All right, and now we're going in. Uh, this is a bit of a risk going in, but you want to do damage, you want to get the lightning victory, and you have to rely for the skeleton to basically go into a one-on-one -on -one with your own summons, and that means you can perfect score this level. All right, on to the next one. The epic encounter number two happens to be the ultimate end boss in this adventure, at least if you're having the same units that I'm having and you're missing one unit that is really, really good in this level that happens to be Nimrul. If you move in Nimrul here where Granny is, in my case, to the top and then go in hard on one on either one on the other side and use the active of Nimrul. You're just like taking them out left and right, not much of a problem. I don't happen to have Nimrul, I do have Granny, which is also a pretty good unit. Thinking about the positioning for a very, very long time, and this is Ironically enough, the first or second run that I did for this level. So, so this is not like I was like thinking about this forever. This was just to me the straightforward approach. What do we need to do here? So you want to put Granny on the left side and you want to move forward with Granny, get a skeleton out of it. That's a good start, obviously. Green Akeshu behind the pillar, spread a lot of darkness. Now Umano can come in, can attack, can also use the active. Not exactly sure what's better here, I just went for the active on this attempt. And then you want to move to the right side with Ranaklu rather than the left side, because on the left side there are more opponents. So now you have a really good base to, to get this level, um, to master this level basically. But you can see here, there's one gunner too many, and the gunner took a shot at Ranaklu. And that means that the perfect score for us is gun in this level. Yes, I'm, I'm doing this to you guys, I'm sorry, I'm putting you through this, but I played this level for million times so you will have to watch it twice i'm sorry for that actually i'm not i'm not sorry for that i have to correct myself all right so this was my first attempt pretty successful at the end of the day this almost gets us a perfect score the end of the the fight is a bit of a walk in the park I'm trying to kill akio with any other unit that can level up because my queen akesho is maxed out uh, didn't really work out and this got us 498 out of 500 we're gonna come back to this level at the very end of this video here we can see myself tackling epic encounter number three for the first time ever because I have zero points in this level. So let's see how this goes. And uh, you can tell this is one of those levels where again positioning plays the absolutely major role. So the one thing that you need to immediately like zoom in on is Katsuma. There's a Katsuma on the board so we need to take Katsuma out. How do we take Katsuma out? We are playing our Queen Akeshu and we want to use her active. You don't have to target Katsuma herself, you just need to target any unit that is standing in a straight line with Katsuma because then Katsuma is going to be shrouded in darkness and that means that she's not going to use her passive. So this is the first thing that you really need to know. The other thing that you can see here, we, we have to play mages, there's a couple of 
components that are standing next to water. So Tim Tim seems like a pretty good idea. I'm going back and forth and I'm like, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. What is the unit I'm looking for? Oh, it's Runner Clue. What am I doing? Jesus. All right. So Runner Clue is now in my starting squad. Just checking. This looks fine. So let's basically go right in because the game plan is pretty straightforward. You can already see that in the positioning. Going in with Akeshru, step number one. Step number two, get Granny in position to spawn some skeletons. Step number three, connect with Runner Clue. Because you don't want to use Tim Tim first and then not get anything out of the Tim Tim attack. Or rather, you don't want to have um, any more targets to connect with Runner Clue. So this is why I'm like moving carefully here. I'm thinking about Tim Tim, but then I'm like, wait a second. I need to connect with Runner Clue. So let's move in with Runner Clue first. All right, so he moves forward into the thorns. Doesn't seem like the best idea, but it's the only option we got to connect with Runner Clue. Now we have four shades that already looks like something, uh, like we're on the right track, basically. And now Tim Tim can go in, use the Flood of Crabs. The opponents are standing next to water. There's a block by Taro, but it doesn't really matter because Taro is only gonna taunt. And now we're in a really, really good position. Since Dogger can walk over water, this is a good spot for Dogger. And now that's basically the end of the level. I mean, there's not much else that I can tell you guys. It's just the question of who do we attack next? Where do we want to go in? Uh, what are we going to do? So after some back and forth thinking about this, uh, I'm deciding that Taro is like a unit that can be pinned down with a second shade in front of himself. So Taro is not a threat at all, which means we have to first focus on Katsume. So. Or maybe take out Taro first. I think I'm going a bit back and forth with my ideas here. I guess I realized I have so many attackers that Katsuma is not going to be a problem either. And that is actually true. And that gives us the perfect score in this level on our very first attempt. So far so good. On to the legendary level. The legendary encounter has not been played before. This is my first attempt at this level, but I've already talked to my guildmates and they said that this is a pretty straightforward legendary level. And when you look at it, immediately you can tell, oh, there's two Taros, that's good. There's two units that are not going to attack or doing any damage on their first turn. So the next thing you need to think about is where do I place my units? Assuming that they're going to walk down towards you and not all gonna suicide into the thorns, it seems like a rather smart idea to try and shift your own units a little bit to the right side with the exception of Umanu because Umanu needs to get close to wherever the shades are going to spawn or rather the darkness is going to spread. So this wa this watch was like clear enough. Now the question is do we aim for the skeletons? We shouldn't because we can give them hammer time. Should we aim for a more threatening opponent? like Shun. So we want to move with Akeshu to the left side now instead of staying on the right. Take out Shun, take out Katsume. That's already a really good start. So now we're spreading darkness as always. We're using the active of Umano. Give hammer time to the skeletons. Now the only question is where do we connect with Runner Clue? But we need to pressure, 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 which means more shades. And turning a skeleton into yet another shade with the passive of uh, Runner Clue is basically key here because now we can go in super hard. This is already our last turn, but you can see my units are not like by any stretch of the imagination. My Umano is like level 27 or something like that. And that's still enough to just move forward here. 27 Umano, 31 Runner Clue. So my units are not like broken strong or something, but it's enough to finish the legendary level on my first attempt with a perfect score. So there was only one level missing, two points in the entire adventure. So let's tackle that for a second time. So here we are again at the epic encounter number two. Didn't even look at the victory conditions because I know them. I played this 20 times, this, this level, this is super hard level. The correct choice is Katsume. Katsume can take out both gunners with her active. That is key on the left side. Now for the middle. Look at where Akeshru is targeting. It's not the first skeleton, it's the second skeleton. That's also important. Now Umano is moving in, spreading the darkness. You have to get a little bit lucky with the way that the darkness is spreading. Use the active of Umanu first. I went back and forth, tried both out. This is the correct order. And now Runner Clue comes in. And again, you have to be a little bit lucky where the darkness that Runner Clue is going to spread is going to end up. And this puts you in a perfect position to just with ease finish this level. So now we can go in with Umanu, take a shot at Granny. 
Then Katsum is going in. So it's still not going down, but all right, we, we can do this. And then I make a mistake moving forward with Ranaklu. What am I doing? Why am I not staying in the shrub? But in the end, it doesn't matter. And that means we're getting the lightning victory, 500 points. And that means that we are maxed out in the entire festival. I was able to collect every single point for the first time ever. Super excited about this. And that, of course, means that we're getting another chest. Here it is, the diamond event chest. In case you were wondering, is it worth putting all that effort in i would argue it's apparently not it's a nice chest but it basically looks like all the other chests so if you are basically losing sleep over those last two points or something like that and you really can't bring yourself to playing this level over and over again i think you're going to be good uh, you can sleep well even without the final chest but that's basically been it this is queen akeshro's adventure the first adventure ever that i was able to max points everywhere i think part of the reason is that a lot of the victory conditions were very very similar obviously i have some strong majors uh, so all the levels where you have to play majors are not that hard and then all of the levels where you had to have either night vision or cave and realm heroes which is the same thing you are basically just playing the same three units and that is always umanu ranaklu and of course queen akeshu and half the time that basically gets you there i hope you found these videos entertaining and insightful i hope you are able to do really really well in the festival and then i see you guys very very soon either in the arena on the official discord or on the discord of my squad eternal nexus you can join us there we do have an open spot every once in a while so just check out our discord you can apply there become a member of our guild you will learn all the insights of the game because we have even more videos on our private server basically see you guys very very soon until next time anytime now